Yeah, well, she'll tough it out, uh, Neil, and um, there will be, of course, that vote of no confidence later today, which she will survive because the SNP have the support of the Greens. This report, uh, all 192 pages of it, has just been published. Uh, we revealed the key details, of course, last week, and um, it carries confirmation this morning that, in the view of the Harassment Committee, by majority, uh, they believe that Nicola Sturgeon misled that committee in her evidence about a key meeting and therefore uh, misled Parliament. In its view, it is a potential breach of the ministerial code. But it does uh, make the point that uh, the committee believes the James Hamilton report, that was the one yesterday that uh, concluded Nicola Sturgeon had not breached the ministerial code. This committee is saying that the James Hamilton report is the most appropriate place to address the question of whether or not the First Minister has breached the Scottish ministerial code. So I suppose Nicola Sturgeon, who declared herself not guilty on the back of the James Hamilton report yesterday, will point to that particular passage uh, as evidence that, as she would have it, she is in the clear. There is much more in this report to, to digest over the coming uh, wee while, but there is criticism uh, of Scotland's top civil servant, Leslie Evans, for her handling uh, of this affair and, um, you know, many other matters germane to the whole Salmond uh, affair, which will be articulated in full, I suppose, in this Parliament today. A no-confidence vote, result of that, 7.35 this evening. But as I say, Nicola Sturgeon will survive that. James, uh, for now, thanks very much indeed. Uh, we'll let James uh, get on with having a closer look at that which we've published, but uh, that which has just been published. Uh, but of course, we have been uh, out trying to secure comment from uh, the lady in question, the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon. Here's what she's been saying today. This morning, how you report, uh, do you know what? I'm going to leave uh, politics to others today. Uh, my thoughts today, one year on from the country going into lockdown, are with the almost 10,000 families across the country who've lost a loved one and to everybody who's made really painful sacrifices over the past year. So my priority today is to continue to take the decisions that help get the country through this most difficult of times. Do you think the Hollywood inquiry is doing two parts of that? And the first ministerial car uh, pulls away. Uh, but let's stick with the story. Joining us to discuss this some more is uh, Murdo Fraser. Now, he's a Scottish Conservative MSP and, of course, member of uh, the Scottish Government's Handling of Harassments, Harassment Complaints uh, Committee. Uh, Mr Fraser, good to see you this morning. Um, I suppose the question has to be, now that we've had the, the independent report, now that we've had the parliamentary uh, inquiry including, it's pretty clear Nicola Sturgeon is not going anywhere. Well, this report by the Parliamentary Committee spent many, many hours taking evidence uh, and looked at thousands of documents and has come to a very uh, significant set of conclusions, the great majority of which, incidentally, were agreed unanimously on a cross-party basis, which points to really significant failings within the Scottish Government, failings that led to two women who made complaints against the former First Minister, Alex Salmon, not having those complaints properly addressed, a Scottish Government complaints process that was held by the highest court in Scotland to be unlawful and a waste of hundreds of thousands of pounds of taxpayers' money paying Alex Salmon's legal costs. And what's extraordinary about this is that nobody has taken responsibility. Nobody has lost their job and nobody has resigned. And Nicola Sturgeon is head of the Scottish Government. Today, she has to take responsibility for these catastrophic failings under her watch as First Minister. Sure, I, I, I understand all of that, but on, on the central question relating to whether or not Nicola Sturgeon can continue in post breach of the ministerial code, isn't it the case that your inquiry said the independent inquiry is best placed to decide on that? It has decided on that. It is said that the First Minister is not in breach of the ministerial code, that she did not mislead Parliament. Well, it's our committee's view that she did mislead the committee and did therefore mislead Parliament. And let me quote you what James Hamilton says in his report, at paragraph 7.11. He says, it is for the Scottish Parliament to decide whether they were misled uh, by uh, the First Minister. So this is a committee of the Parliament that has come to a view, after a great deal of detailed consideration of the evidence, that Nicola Sturgeon did mislead 
the committee and did therefore mislead Parliament. Now, that but on that point, but on that point, the one, the, the, that point, on that point, no Mr. Fraser, on that point, Mr. Fraser, your committee did not feel that it could put itself in a position to decide whether or not she had misled Parliament intentionally, whether that she had been reckless to the potential that she had misled Parliament recklessly. You can mislead Parliament and not have to resign. You have to intend to mislead Parliament. You have to intend to deceive Parliament. And neither your committee nor the independent uh, lawyer-led inquiry have been able to conclude that. Well, it is the opinion of Mr Hamilton that it's up to the Parliament to decide whether or not the First Minister misled it. Now, our committee's view is she did mislead the committee in terms of what she told us. Uh, therefore, our view is that she should resign as a result. What, is, what impact has, had, has all of this had, do you think? From, from, from your perspective, of course, as a, as a Scottish Conservative under an SNP ad, ad administration, but what is your assessment of, of how the continuing allegations, the continuing questioning of the most senior politician in Scotland, what, what effect that might have had on the case for independence? It certainly seems to have been reflected a little bit, at least in the polls of late. I think this whole incident has been incredibly damaging to the institutions of government in Scotland. You know, we expect politicians to tell the truth. We expect politicians to be held to a high standard. We expect politicians not to let down the people who work for them. We expect politicians not to waste public money defending court actions which are indefensible. In all these respects, uh, Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP government have let Scotland down. And I'm not surprised that we're seeing a shift in the opinion okay. polls now with a slide in support for, for independence and a slide in support for the SNP, because they are seeing serious failings in government which have been exposed, are being exposed today. I, I get that point, Mr. Fraser. I get that point. There are, there, are two, there, are two, there are two key votes that are coming up, of course. The vote of no confidence, which Nicola Sturgeon will win in the Scottish Parliament, and, of course, elections to the Scottish Parliament come May, which, despite all the negative press, everyone expects the SNP to do particularly well in. She'll win the vote of no confidence. The SNP will undoubtedly be the most successful party in the Scottish parliamentary elections. I mean, the people of Scotland, either through their representatives at the Scottish Parliament or through the ballot box, will be signalling, to an extent, their support of Nicola Sturgeon in her position. Well, let's not prejudge the outcome of the election before a single vote is being cast. The election is still some weeks away. I think people will look at what we've seen over the last few days and over many weeks before that. We have a governing party in Scotland at war with itself, with the former leader of the party, the former first minister, claiming a conspiracy against them by leading people in the party today and taxpayers' money being wasted and female complainants who've made concerns raised against that former first minister badly let down. That's no way to conduct government. And I think when people see the detail of this report today and they see what this committee on a cross-party basis, uh, making conclusions almost exclusively on a unanimous basis uh, about the failings in government, when people see that, they will start asking very serious questions as to whether Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP are fit to continue to be in government in Scotland, given the very serious errors that they've made and the amount of public money that has been wasted.